How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Six Kill, and welcome back to Not For Broadcast. We just did our first broadcast of Chapter 3 in the last episode. It didn't go ideally, to be fair. The people at Disrupt weren't very happy with me, and the ratings were not great. But on the plus side, we got to play a crazy new lad, so... Swings and roundabouts, I suppose. Let's jump back in, shall we? Uh, I don't know how much longer there is to go, or how many bits of this chapter, how many broadcasts there are, but let's get back in. Okay, we are going in five... Here we go. Four, three... Welcome back to the National Nightly News with me, Megan Wolf. Very shortly, we'll be heading on over to the final episode of what has quickly become a hugely successful feature, The Notice Board. But before we do, let's chat with Philippa Radin. Tell me, why do you think the public love The Notice Board so much? It's real. <laughs> there, I said it. it. It connects with people. You know, people look at us and they say, those are real people struggling with real problems. That's a, that's a really interesting point. Yeah, I mean, I was saying to my PA secretary as I got out the limo, I was saying, it's good oh, yeah. for people Oh yeah, my PA secretary, yeah, you're a real person, all right. Authentic yeah. people uh, like them on TV. Mmm, people like you. Yeah, precisely. Right. Unfortunately, then I was interrupted by some dreadful wretch who wanted an autograph, but a swift kicking from security soon put him back in line. <laughs> Yes, well, I think it's really good that our screens are filled with such relatable stories. Uh -huh. So, the notice board is coming to an end after a sensational time at the top. What do you think has made this show so successful? Oh, it's a combination of so many things. Um, so look at the rubbish. Work, um, I have to keep an eye out for the, the fist, don't I? Look, wow, we really have a lot to thank you for. Hey, hey, hey. You're welcome. <laughs> we just heard so well. our man's on camera four. Okay. I have a real sense of responsibility now. You know, a sense I've been entrusted with something Get back to the interview, Alex. I should use that platform for good. Yeah, I think that's really important that we should use this platform to, to do good in the world. I agree. That's exactly it. So I've decided to help as many Excellent work, Alex. That's the location shared. Next, you'll need to give them the go. Okay, how do I do that? Better access to education or, you know, reducing child poverty. Oh, no, by adopting as many as I can get my hands on. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, how, many, how many children have you adopted? Oh, we're well into the double figures now, Megan. I stopped counting in the late 30s. <laughs> Goodness, that is a lot of children. Yeah, once we finish putting them into the guest room, I'll have to put a futon in the laundry cupboard. Oh, you really are some sort of hero. Hey, I live a privileged life. What can I say? I mean, any child I can take on is a child rescued from suffering. Poor children. Were their lives really that bad before? Oh, they're Northerns, I presume so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's shocking to think, actually, that only one in 10,000 children have a celebrity parent. Oh, hmm. shocking. I'd never thought of it that way before. Well, I'm doing everything I can to fix those numbers. What do you think it is about your life that's so desirable, then? Well, it's mainly shame and panic interspersed with expensive bottled water, so uh, actually, if anyone wants to, I'd happily trade. Now <laughs> that I can relate to. Right, <laughs> you better go off and get ready. That was Philippa Radin sharing some thoughts about her lifestyle. I think it's really important to stay grounded uh, and keep everything in perspective, clearly. Not everyone else agrees, but Clearly. that's enough for me. Let's go now over to Dangly Parts for the final ever episode of The Notice Board. Dangly Parts. Look at my dangly parts. <laughs> oh, what a clown. <laughs> what a day. First the tea morning, and now to post this notice. I don't know how I managed to cope with it all. Oh wait, perhaps I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a joke. Oh, by Saint Barnabas, what on earth is all this? Freeze, dirtbag. Oh, Laura, it's you. I thought for a moment you were a knife-wielding mugger or stabber. A stabber? No, I'm afraid not. It's just me, a community cohesion officer, responsible for keeping crime at record lows. Of course. I keep forgetting that thanks to you and your colleagues, violence on our streets is a thing of the past. What's all this, Vicar? I know. It's a disgrace. 
Somebody it's time for the go code. Give us three balls in a row, Alex. That will start the pincer movement. We might just pull this off. Push forward! Three balls in a row, you got it. Careful, Vicar. It looks heavy. Ha! They don't call me the right reverend. Ripped for no reason. <laughs> Terrible. Yes! It's no good. It looks like all those crucifix classes were a waste of time. Perhaps you, a young CCO, would be able to move it. Try and get the next one. What? Didn't we do that? We bowed. We triple bowed. Looks like all those lifting classes were a waste of time. It's too heavy. I'll just keep bowing until it works. A strong and capable Let's hope that's enough. At least you tried, Alex. Strong enough to lift this. Did someone call for the best firefighter in town? Hi! Well done, Captain Evans. You're so much stronger than us. <laughs> Especially me, the weak old man. It's the least I could do for my community. Where? <laughs> you asshole. No luck catching the little devil then? Unfortunately not. The ferret struck again last night. At least we got good ratings when this time. I think this is the best ratings I've ever had. <laughs> he found that every single stamp had been pre-licked. <laughs> God! Some people have no decency. Sadly, if we don't catch him before tomorrow, we may have to cancel the village fate. <laughs> don't worry. We won't let that happen. Will we, Vicar? No, no, no. Laura. Tell me, this is the worst why fucking play ever. <laughs> Some say it's because of his sneaky nature. But really, it's because whenever he strikes, he always leaves behind the foul stench of urine. <laughs> Never fear, officer. We'll catch this pissy nuisance and save the village fate. Or my name's not Captain Danger Evans. Hey. The community cohesion team are doing their best. But they simply don't have the smarts to solve this mystery. But I know someone who does. Someone who's about to blow this thing wide open. <laughs> Me! <laughs> Blackout! This is a nightmare. Please make it stop. Uh, it's so cringe. It's the it's cringest the thing in the world. The I'm going to cringe to death before the end of this episode. Convention. I apologize. I sure hope everything goes to plan. Oh, look! There's <laughs> Mrs. Craven Fuck setting up hell. the cake stall. And look, there's the motorcycle display team setting up for a show that would be far too expensive for live television. I'm going to set up the coconut shy. Man, just what booing everything doing, is quite Vicar? fun. First, I'm running the tombola. Then, I'll be selling forgiveness for money. Aren't you judging the jams? I couldn't possibly. Ah! Well, that sounded like Mrs. Craven. <gasps> Looks like someone sucked all the jam out of her donuts. Shut down, Ferret has struck again. Whatever are we to do? Although I'm very competent, I have no idea how to solve this case. I guess we'll just have to cancel the fate. Hold it right there, ferret. Oh, me? Have you been drinking from the fire extinguishers again? Not you. What's in the fire extinguisher? The vicar. Cabin dioxide? Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. Admit it. You wanted the village fate cancelled so you could have the day off, didn't you? I already have to work Sundays. I shouldn't have to work two days a week. <laughs> <laughs> But Two days how a week. did you know? Well, my first clue was the smell. Yes, I do smell of urine. Next, I noticed that the vicar's tongue was particularly dry, almost as if he'd been licking thousands and thousands of stamps. Or perhaps eating Mrs. Craven's baking. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me on to my third clue. The vicar said that he had no more room 
almost as if he'd had his fill. Precisely. But you managed to figure it all out from that. Well, I also uh, found this at the scene. <laughs> that <laughs> proves nothing. No! Get him out of here, officer! <laughs> no! no. Oh, you did it, Captain. <laughs> you could say you ferreted him out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on. Let's go and have a party in my massive garden. I am doing well. Thanks to you, we're all doing well. That was it. The final ever episode. Thank God that was the final episode ever. Jesus, don't let that happen again. Jeff, Philippa and Tommy. After the break, we'll be both dancing and learning. So don't change that channel. We'll be right back. That's the ads. Well done, everybody. Whoa! <laughs> what a brilliant What's running. the ad we did? I've got it here. It's queued oh, up. Shit. I've got four kinds of sausage. Hey, you, you. Hang on. What's this ad about? Just 24 hours. All the products in our last satisfaction center are on. One last push, Alex. We're closing in. Hey, plus. One of the guests in the last section is working with us. You'll be asked to censor on our behalf. If you do it right, the final orders will be given. Okay. We'll get three chances. Get at least two of them right, and we're going to win this thing. Okay. It's happening, Alex. Tonight we take it back. I can't believe it's okay. all on sale. Okay. Yes, indeed. This place is closing down, and everything's got to go. No, no, it's not closing down. Oh, relocating, relocating. <laughs> That's right, Brad. Remington Smith will be back to a territory near you very soon. <laughs> Bigger, stronger, and more powerful than ever. That sounds like demolition. Ah! Bulldozers. Oh, this isn't as fun as Crazy Neil, so let's listen to what's happening over here. You can run back to Jenny now. <laughs> I don't know what that was about, but Sorry it was about awesome. That, Sarah. <laughs> Nothing you can tell me. That's all, like, at all. They've said no one's died, that's all I can say. Ten seconds. All right, here we go. What's wrong with you? She is in tears. Ugh. Going in five. I didn't want to play the ad because I thought that I would end up dead at the end of it. Welcome back so to the National the Nightly end. News. Later in this segment, we're hoping to be able to go back to Patrick Bannon at the scene of tonight's shocking disruption. Patrick Bannon's attack. head exploded. But first, I'm delighted to be joined by the cast of the smash hit musical everyone is talking about. I'll be speaking with the cast in a moment, but first, let's take a look at them in action. Please give a warm National Nightly welcome to the Novaries. <laughs> Oh, we're getting a, we got a, a multiplier here. I'm scared now. I have a decent life. I'm a happy, loving wife. And my job is well paid and fulfilling. I have a husband, Keep my A grade plus. A plus, A plus uh, grade. That'd be nice. And I have to tell him something that is absolutely chilling. We share coffee. What's happening? We do charitable deeds, but the flowers are so we just shook. I'm home. Oh, darling John. Oh, dear is John. There's something very wrong. I've just had a conversation with our doctor David Wong, so please be seated. This news will make you feel I'm not fast enough for this. You poor unlucky chump. Is it cancer? Worse of John. We're having a baby. How can this be? Oh, woe oh, is me. Why has this happened to me? I always wear two condoms for the maximum of safety. <laughs> In our tiny flat, we built a peaceful habitat. Uh, now our lives are fucked. We're, we're having, having a, a baby. baby. Now you can't have any wine at book club. And there won't be any time for foot rubs. Now your hair will stink of weed. And you'll start to disagree. And forget about that holiday in Territory 3. No more waking up at half past ten. In fact, you're never going to get a good night's sleep again. No 
almost snap decisions Still go on to a club You'll be lucky if you even make it out to the pub Why can't we be more like our gay and lesbian chums? The only who they have to deal with comes from personal bums Now when I take a sick day at home The parasite won't leave you alone How he's grown! Multiplier up. We got a childless life. Doesn't seem to be changing, though. Or is this a very no long song? It might be a very no long song. One no one draws things on the walls. A happy husband. A wonderful wife. We got a childless life. We're having a baby. Get that great up soon. No more spies and no more We're ways. having a baby. 18 years on Bill Sally's. Time for a whole new face. We're having a baby. One more thing before the show begins. Have you considered that you might be having Probably not. Probably not. No. <laughs> I guess I'll clap, even though it was terrible. <laughs> Amazing. The Novaries there, treating us to their opening number from Energy for a Childless Life, which is currently the hottest ticket in the Capital Theatre District. And we'll be touring the territories later this year. Right then, come on, you got. Come on down. <laughs> Let's go. Don't be shy. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Megan. Hi. It's an honour to be here. Oh, really? Are you fans of the show? Yes, yes. used to be. <laughs> well, listen. Let's get stuck in. You're amazing musical. Now, I mean, not only do you perform this show every single night. With matinees on Wednesday and Saturday. <laughs> right, but you're also the show's creators, am I right? Well, everyone contributed their ideas and then some of us went away and did the actual work on the script. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's very much a team effort. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> How rude of me, I've not introduced any of you. <laughs> I'll be the one being replaced next. Let's go down the line, shall we? Hi, I'm Jack. <laughs> Jim Blunt. Pleasure to be here. Jennifer Boreham Woodley. Hello, I'm John. John Sapley. Used to be in the business professionally. My name's Jill, with a J. And I'm Janet. I'm the youngest. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> and you were all friends previously. I mean, what a, what a coincidence, right? <laughs> uh, with, with, your, with your names begin, beginning with a J. Oh, my goodness, guys. Our names all begin with J. How uh, <laughs> have we never noticed that? Uh, because you haven't typed them out a thousand times? <laughs> <laughs> you knew? Why didn't you say anything? I thought we all knew. It's bloody obvious, isn't it? I just thought we were doing a funny thing where we never mentioned it. <laughs> and I believe as well as being friends, you're also couples. You know, in real life as well as in the show. Well, <laughs> oh, well. God, not exactly. No. I'm not married to him. Uh, <laughs> I'm with Janet. And I'm with John, you lucky bean. <laughs> Jim and I are married. Four fabulous years. <laughs> well, that must make for some confusion in the rehearsal room. Oh, you should have seen the first draft. Jen decided that Jack would play Jim, I would play Jack. Jen, Janet. Jill, Jen. <laughs> Janet, Jill. What about John? 
Well, my character was originally just called Man One. It was allegorical. It was very confusing. Not for a professional. After <laughs> much doing and throwing. And gnashing and wailing. <laughs> And gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> we decided that we'd just use our own names, which um, is less truthful. Right. We're also less likely to go into the wrong dressing rooms. Oh, True. Yeah, that would be very embarrassing, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, of course, when I first wrote it, we were only meant to run for a few nights at the Mimbley Village Hall, but when I registered it with the Department for Culture, mm. it caught the eye of someone high up, and before you could say overnight sensation, we were transferring to the capital! <laughs> it's all been a bit of a roller coaster, really. Yeah. I'm only 19. I'm the youngest. You said that, yeah. You really don't have to repeat that. <laughs> I had to give up my job as a mortuary technician. Well, yes, we all had to move to the capital. Yes, yes. <laughs> I love that job. It's been a very turbulent time. So peaceful, no singing. <laughs> <laughs> this piece isn't. <laughs> Stand by, Alex. Sense of the orange. Sense of the orange, you got it. And why you shouldn't have them. <laughs> In a way, I guess it is political, with a small p. After all, we are a solid unit, and eagle-eyed audience members will see we nod our heads to advance on stage throughout, and we target the messaging at women aged 22, well, about 35, as they're the most likely to be afflicted by this terrible problem. Terrible problem. Having children. Well, you understand, Megan. You clearly agree. Wow. This isn't about me. So. Of course, we see that there are advantages to a family unit, but eagle-eyed couples watch as the little parasites advance on their lives. And there's no time to play the guitar, get through a book, or watch a movie. They're exhausted, passed out on the couch by 20 to 9, for God's sake. You're very chatty tonight, dear. Usually I'm the chatty one, because... You're the youngest, we know! <laughs> it's not a badge of honour, Janet. <laughs> Janet, please, Jennifer. Oh, well said, John. Thanks, Jack. Got you back. So, could, um, could you just tell us... Uh, what is the play about? Mm. What happens in yes. it? Well, go ahead. It's a tragedy. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> um, Jennifer, myself, and John have their child, and then the story charts the downfall. Worried about what aren't coming dreams. through. And there's lots of singing. And <laughs> there's lots of singing, and I fucking I hate it. <laughs> My character works at a menu centre for a distribution unit. Eagle eyed, she sees her friend's rapid advance to a pit of despair. Becoming a target for children's TV case for advertising at the age of 22, she decides to take drastic action. I can't really say more, though. There, we're going to get A grade anyway. Yes. I feel like it might be bugged, because I never <laughs> get this good a grade. The second that for anyone who might come to see it. The only reason I get a good grade is if it was bugged. all of you. <laughs> for too long, we've been told that a life without children is somehow incomplete, that, that children are, are a blessing. Well, I've done the research, and they're not. <laughs> Besides, there's already loads of bastards running around all over the place. So. <laughs> we just want people to have the option of a happy, child-free life without stigma. <laughs> you know. That's fair. When I was 14. Never kid, don't have a kid. Who gives a shit? Out, just do what you got to do. <laughs> I had an experience with a girl called Julia Jacobs. She was an experiment, I guess, you know, a chance to... Dip my toes into the meeting. Well, thank you all so much for coming in tonight. I really hope you keep them dancing in the aisles for many performances to come. Did we do good with the orange? And I am pleased to say we can now go back to Patrick Bannon to get the latest from the scene of tonight's horrific events. Patrick, are you okay? Thank you, Megan. This is Patrick Bannon reporting from the scene of tonight's devastating and symbolic attack tonight this evening. An attack which I myself have been found myself caught up in. I, I'm still a little dazed and a little deaf, Megan. So I hope you'll forgive me if I seem that it's time to speak with the Prime Minister. Mrs Salisbury, that's you. You're still here. The Prime Minister. You're still here. I couldn't leave. Not, not when there were people that needed help. Any team player would have done the same. I, I don't deserve praise for being human. Yes, no accolades here. Or Palisades. Or lemonade. Right. So, is the situation now are we safe? Uh, yes. Um, the security services performs their duties without hesitation. Yeah, they and shot everybody. I, like I saw to that. Assure the public that <laughs> although there have been some injuries, there were no civilian deaths here this evening. What? Well, that's good news about the civ. Sorry, did you did you say no deaths? That's right. No civilian. Most a bunch of people get shot. Just the four disrupt terrorists curtailed by law enforcement. The fuck is going on out As always, so cohesive. 
If I may, I have a message for your viewers. Of course, the camera, there's the camera. Oh, I'm ready, there, I'm ready. On, on the camera there. Did I have to censor it? Stay at home tonight. Do not become another casualty of war. Disrupt have had their moment, but as the dear departed Peter Clements once famously said, it ends today. Mm, ominous. Thank you, Prime Minister, for those strong words of strength. Back to the studio. Yeah, Wars escalating out there. The studio with Megan Wolf now. Patrick Bannon there, bravely reporting from the front line of tonight's horrifying bombing. Maybe you need to get checked out, Patrick. Well, that brings us to the end of tonight's National Night News. But before we go, National Night News. But throughout the programme tonight, we've been receiving reports of disrupt activities throughout the territories. Through a series of coordinated attacks, these terrorists are attempting to undermine Advance's vital work. However, sources at team headquarters have told us that this acid revolution was not only predicted, but allowed to happen. Our government have lured Disrupt out from the shadows and they are not the overwhelming force they would have you believe. The military have been actioned and, well, it's pretty scary out there tonight, so stay at home and stay with Channel One because the I team has assured out. this program that the turbulence will soon be over and we can once again focus our minds on building the new future with equality, fairness and resources for all. My name is Megan Wolf. Oh, we are so dead. I don't think that makes me feel good. This whole place is being destroyed. <laughs> Bad. That is good and bad. Is that the disrupt building? I think we lost. Broadcast grade A. My first one was very bad, but my other two were real good. Hell yeah. You have received a small bonus. Current wealth, manageable debt. Just like real life. Can afford coffee. Cheers. Disrupt up, advance down, and channel one. Broken hearts? What now? Well, I think we should wrap this episode up because we're about half hour in. Uh, and in the next one, let's see what happens next, I suppose. It doesn't look good for uh, Disrupt though. It says Disrupt up, but they would just wash Disrupt's Rebellion right there and then. We didn't get to blow up a radio tower though, so. Yay. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for getting out to me, and I'll see you in the next one.